Hello, my name is Teacher Neil and today we will be learning about accommodation and some vocabulary and some practice sentences that can help you for the speaking section of your IELTS test. Now, if you go and follow through all of these words and all of these phrases, we think that you will be able to ace the speaking section of your exam. Let's start, shall we? First, we have an apartment, which is an American word, or a flat, which is the way British people would say that. So let us write here B, B for British English, right? So, an apartment or a flat is different from, let's say, a house. Let us write here houses. The houses are usually their own separate building, while an apartment is a small room or building inside of a big building. Now, let us look at some examples and some sentences that we can use to describe our accommodation. Questions like, for example, what kind of accommodation do you live in? Or, in your country, what kind of accommodation do people usually live in? Let's first look at apartment or flat. We can say, I live on the second floor or second story. Story, of course, is American English and floor is British English. I live on the second floor of a tall apartment building and we can use a lot of different vocabulary words such as amenities and also mod cons. Now amenities are nice things that your apartment building can come with. You could say I live in a very nice big apartment building. It has got nice amenities such as a foyer or you can say a swimming pool, a swimming pool or even a gym. My apartment has a lot of nice amenities or you can also say it also came with a lot of mod cons. Mod cons means nice things that come in your building already. For example, an oven, or you can say a nice AC or central heating. Right, so over to the next word. We have got a condo. A condo is a bigger, more luxurious building. We can say here luxurious and luxurious means it's more expensive. It is larger. You're paying more money for it. So an example sentence would be, I am paying a lot of money by renting the condo on the top floor of the apartment building. We can have a lot of different examples of apartments like a serviced apartment. Serviced means that it comes fully furnished. We can write here fully furnished. Furnished, if you're not sure, means furniture. The furniture are things such as a sofa or maybe even a nice table so you don't have to go somewhere to buy it by yourself. You could say, I have just bought an apartment and it was a serviced apartment or I am renting a serviced apartment. Another example we can have is a loft apartment or a studio apartment. Studio is also American English and loft is British which means basically that there are no walls and different rooms inside of your apartment. It is a big open space, usually one big space in the building and also maybe it has a bathroom inside. So you can say I am renting a studio apartment. It is very cheap. I don't have to pay a lot of money but the building came with a lot of amenities, meaning 
I have a foyer, a gym, swimming pool, etc. Moving on, skyscraper. Now, just look at the word. Look at the word sky. That means that the building is very high and looking out over the skyline. Let's write here, skyline. That basically means you are on a top floor and you can see out over the city. A good sentence we can use using skyscraper and skyline is, I am renting a big luxurious apartment in a skyscraper and it has a beautiful view of the city skyline. Right. All right. Now, moving on, we will go to houses. Now, as you will remember, houses are their own separate buildings, while apartments are buildings or rooms inside of other buildings. So just be sure to say, I am renting an apartment, I am renting a house, or I have bought a house. Now, here are the examples of the different kinds of houses we can find. We can find townhouse. A townhouse is a, is a tall, high, narrow house and usually in places like London they are very close together. So let's just write here, narrow, high house and usually in places like Asia you can also say I am renting a room in a townhouse or I'm going to buy a townhouse. Another one we can have is a detached house. Now if you don't know what detached means, detached means that it is separate from the main house. So we can write here, separate from the main house. A detached house can usually come with a lot of facilities. Facilities are things that are special to the building, like an apartment, or to the house itself. With an apartment, we can say that the apartment building comes with many facilities. For example, mechanical parking, mechanical parking, or also we can say there is a space for garbage. There is a garbage area and if we go over to detached houses you could say for example I am renting a detached house in London and it has wonderful facilities for example there is a game room where we can play pool or it has got a swimming pool right Another good example of a house we can use is a student dorm. Some people will say dormitory, but that is much more official. When you talk to normal people, we could say a student dorm, or if you will be studying in England, you can say a student digs. So let's just write a B for British English. Student dorm is usually close to the university. And you could say, I am close to campus. Campus means the university. And you can say, I am renting a student dorm. It is very close to my university building. So I can just walk over there. And also in my student dorm, they have food. They have food for us, they have catering. So, student dorms is usually a room inside of a school, inside of a school or a university building. Another example we can use is rented or paying guest accommodation, which usually describes or refers to things such as a hotel, or modernly, we could also talk about uh, Airbnb. Good example we can use as a sentence is, 
I am renting a guest accommodation. It has a lot of facilities, it has a lot of amenities, it has a lot of mod cons. I am renting a hotel room or I am renting a B&B. It is a detached house and it is not far from the city. One more example we can have is a cottage. Now, a cottage is usually a smaller house, usually an older house, and usually it will be found in the countryside. So this is usually better used when you are going on vacation. You can say, oh, me and my girlfriend want to go to the seaside and we will be renting, we will be renting a cottage close to the sea. And usually they are not permanent living spaces, but a place where you can stay on vacation. Right. So just in conclusion, apartments, houses, and these are different kinds of accommodations that you can either rent or buy. Now, we will be covering useful phrases and collocations that you can use during the speaking part of your IELTS exam to fully express and elaborate the kind of accommodations that you are living in. Here are some example sentences and phrases that you can use to describe your living situation. Number one, live in apartment blocks. Now, what that means is if you are living on, let's say, the first or the second story, you can say, I live on the second floor in an apartment in the apartment blocks. That means that there will be four or five different apartments inside the same floor. However, if you are living in, say, for example, a condo, a condo means it is a separate apartment on its own floor, usually on top of the building. So you can say, I live in a luxurious condo on the top floor, or you can say, I am renting an apartment in an apartment blocks, which just means that there are many different apartments on the same floor. Next, we can have live in rented accommodations. Now, if you'll remember, rent means that you're paying money every month to stay there. You do not own the property. Now, let's look at our vocabulary to see how we can bring the vocabulary and the phrase together to make your sentence more colorful so that people can understand you better and you can express yourself better. For example, I am renting a accommodation. We won't say accommodation. We can say I am renting a dorm room or I am renting a detached house, which came with a lot of wonderful amenities. Amenities, as you'll remember, are nice things that come with either an apartment or a house. For example, the house came with a garage. A garage means a place where you can park your car. Or, I am renting a wonderful detached house with a back garden. One garden or many gardens, it doesn't matter. Or if you have an apartment, you can say, I am renting a nice apartment in an apartment blocks and it came with a lot of wonderful amenities like an elevator, a foyer or a loft. You can also say I am renting a nice dorm room and it has a lot of mod cons, modern conveniences. For example, the dorm room came with a lot of mod cons such as a big AC or a wonderful oven or it came with a nice big TV. Let us go to the next phrase, live in the skyline. Now if you'll remember the skyline means that you are on a very high floor and that you can look out over the skyline which means the line in the sky. 
you can see very far over the city. So you can say, I live in the skyline in a very open, spacious, spacious means you have a lot of space. I live in the skyline in a big, spacious studio apartment. Studio means that there are no walls inside. It is one big room and usually a bathroom. Or you can say, I live in the skyline and it has a lot of wonderful mod cons. Let's go over to the next one. Live on campus. What campus means, it means it is close to the university. So, if you are a student and you are living in a dorm room, you can say, I am renting a dorm room and it is very close to campus. Or, if you are right next to your university building, you can say, I live on campus. I live on campus in a studio apartment or I live on campus in a dorm room. Now, now we're moving over to property. Property means a uh, building or uh, land which you own. To do up a property. Now, to do up means to fix up, to fix up, or you can also say to decorate, or another meaning to do up could be improve. To improve, to decorate, or to fix up a property that you own. For example, let's say I have just bought a wonderful, spacious studio apartment but there is nothing inside and the apartment is very old and broken down and it needs to be done up or we can also say fixed up. So to do up a property means you can put in a new carpet or you can fix up the walls or you can give it a nice new paint job. So to do up a property means that you are making it nicer and by doing that, the value, the value of the property will go up. So if you have bought a property and you are looking to rent out the property, first you will have to do up the property. Now, if you have bought a property, for example, a house, or an apartment building, you will maybe have to take out a mortgage. Now look at the word and say it one more time, mortgage. If you don't know what a mortgage means, a mortgage means that you will have to pay every month because you have taken out a deposit. What that means is you have bought a property and now every month you are paying off the mortgage piece by piece until you have fully paid off the property. The bank does not own it anymore. It is now 100% yours. So you can say, I have just bought a nice property. It is a condo on the top floor of a high rise building. It looks on the skyline, but the property is very old and broken. So we have to do up the property or fix up the property so that we can rent it out. And every month I have to pay the mortgage. All right. Now, moving on to number seven, the phrase is to get on the property ladder. Now, what does that mean? It means that you are looking to buy or to purchase your first property. Property. Now, property, as we know, is an apartment or a house. We have seen a lot of examples on that. 
So to get on the property ladder means that now you are going into real estate. Real estate means property, it means houses, it means lands. Now you have got enough money and you can say, I have just made my first million. I am looking to get on the property ladder. I am looking to buy a house or maybe an apartment to rent it out or to own for yourself. And that concludes our lesson on accommodation. Now, feel free to go over these sentences again and practice them until you feel comfortable speaking and expressing yourself with the vocabulary. If you would like to see more videos or practice more different examples and topics, you can go to bestmytest.com for a lot more different topics. And if you like it, be sure to click like and maybe leave a comment so we can hear from your feedback. Happy learning and have a good day.